Mr. Bradley, welcome. Good to have you with us. You guys Thanks have been for calling for uh, extra stimulus to uh, keep the economy moving forward uh, for some time now. As you see it, how do you handicap the odds of that happening, and what are the obstacles to it? Well, we're very optimistic. It's going to get done because it has to get done. If we're going to beat this virus, if we're going to help our economy recover, we need timely, targeted, temporary assistance from Washington. Um, one of the things that we've had the benefit of doing over the last several months is talking to businesses of all sizes across all industries throughout the country and learning exactly what's needed. That's what we transmitted to the president and Congress today. Um, I think they will get it done, and I think we'll have to bridge the partisan differences that we simply can't afford to become an impediment uh, to, to uh, progress in this area. On, on the one hand, as I understand it, the Democratic side has put forth a package of more than $3 trillion. Uh, the GOP side, something north of $1 trillion. One of the main sticking points, as I understand it, beyond the scale of the two uh, proposals, is a provision in it that would provide some sort of liability protection uh, to businesses. I know you are on the side of favoring that. I think the Democrats are on the side of limiting that protection, if it would be in there at all. Explain your case for it. Absolutely. Thanks, Ty. And it's not just about businesses. We've been joined by nonprofits and uh, universities and colleges, all who agree that if a, a school or a nonprofit or a business takes the appropriate steps uh, informed by public health officials to try to prevent the spread of the virus, that they shouldn't be dragged by a trial lawyer into court a year from now alleging that they should have done more. We're not asking for immunity for anyone here. We believe a common sense safe harbor. You follow the advice of the, the medical experts in your business or at your school, and then you shouldn't have to be worried about a court second guessing that later. One of the reasons we're optimistic about this is because there's growing bipartisan support for it. Earlier this week, a group of uh, Democrats and Republicans sent a letter to the leadership endorsing this type of approach. And it's passed before, whether that was in the lead up to Y2K or right after 9-11. This is a tried and true response to very uncertain circumstances. I've got two quick questions that I want to get in. First one is you have an interesting take on the on this one of the sticking points, which is to extend the enhanced unemployment benefits, which had been six hundred dollars a, a month, a month, I think. Uh, and a uh, sorry, was it a week, a week or a, a month? Week. A week, six hundred a, a week, week. Excuse me, uh, which is a lot of money. Uh, and and many have said is a disincentive to have people go back to work. What's your solution to that one? Quickly. We have to bridge the gap. Under the current policy, the average unemployed person makes 134% of what they made working. If we got rid of it entirely, they'd make 45% of what they earned working. We think to come into the sweet spots about 90% of what they earned working, it's gonna make sure that they can pay the bills, but it also makes sure that we get them back into the workforce and back helping our economy. Interesting.